Hi guys, welcome back to Shares Cool Beans and today I'm coming to you with another PGCE video. Today I've been sent, well not today, a couple of weeks ago actually, but I've only taken time to really look at it now. I've kind of been sent a list of, list of pre-course tasks to complete. It's all becoming very real. We've got about five months before the actual PGCE starts and I am freaking the hell out but um i thought i'd share with you some of these um pre-course tasks that we have to do i don't know why i can't speak today i'm finding it very hard to speak um but yeah i thought i'd just share these with you so you can kind of get an insight into what you're going to be what you're expected to do and um how you could be preparing yourself if maybe um you haven't been accepted onto a course yet and are looking to you very soon or, you know, just in general, if you just want to know more about the PGCE. So, obviously, first things first, I'm going to ask you to please, please, please subscribe to the channel. There's going to be so much more PGCE videos on this channel because I haven't even started my journey yet. And I believe I've already got about maybe four or five videos about the PGCE. And obviously, when I actually start in September, there's going to be loads more. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure the notification bell is on on my channel so that you can receive all my latest videos, especially the PGCE one. So let's get into it. This is so, 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 so scary, but exciting as well. Like I'll be moving out in September and everything. It's just, it's a lot. It is becoming a bit overwhelming, but we're gonna get through this together. So anyway, the first pre-course task I've been set is to read and make notes on the aims, values, and purposes of the new national curriculum and um she's kind of sent a link to that let me click on it see what it says oh it says the page is blocked maybe it's just a browser i'm using i'm using google chrome but obviously we will have to study the national curriculum i'm really interested in like um if they're gonna do any work on decolonizing the curriculum and everything like that it should be interesting to learn more about i think as a ta you don't really think about those things i am a ta by the way we kind of just see the work the kids are learning and then we just help them with the work we're not really we're not really given any insight into the national curriculum so that should be very very interesting um the next pre-course task we've been given is um curriculum and lesson planning i think that's what most of us stress about when we're thinking about the pgc is how to lesson plan we have so much that in some schools it takes so long to like plan lessons because they expect you to do it from scratch whereas in other schools they might already have like a plan set out and you just work your way, way around that it really just depends on the school you work in but um we've been sent a link um to the national academy and it says watch at least one maths one english and one foundation subject lesson relevant to the year group key stage you will be working in in september I'll be working in key stage two, so that should be exciting. I always prefer to work with older kids. They're a lot less needy and they have more of a personality and I feel like you can just bond with them loads. So that should be awesome. They are kind of rude though, so, you know. Um, so we kind of have to make notes on the structure of the lesson, objectives and key vocabulary. Um, lesson planning is really what I want to just get stuck into i really want to know how to do it fast because oh, like i said before teachers say it just takes ages and sometimes you have to do really unnecessary things like um mark down the teaching evidence standards and just all of that rubbish so oh well i shouldn't say rubbish because it is essential but you know what i mean okay so next is about the early years foundation stage to be honest, not sure why I really have to do this part because I'm not really planning to work in um, the early years foundation stage. That's like, well, just nursery to reception, I believe. And um, yeah, we have to read the statutory framework for um, early years foundation stage and read the develop matters guidance. 
and all of that is on the gov dot page so let me just click on it and see if anything comes up uh, why are all these pages blocked i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to try it on another browser or um email them about that because these pages are blocked um well the next peak <clears throat> The next pre-task we have to do is study phonics. Now, I taught phonics last year, so I kind of know my way around it. I remember quite a lot, actually, and I really enjoyed teaching it. So we have to read the document on letters and sounds and write notes about the background to the document, the principles and practices of high quality phonics, the simple view of reading, terminology, representation of phonemes, overview of the phases, planning and progression, speaking and listening, seven aspects and seven strands of high quality phonics and high frequency words and assessment. So I think I'm really gonna enjoy, enjoy doing this part because teaching read, write, income phonics is great. You know, when you get them to learn all the sounds like um, a, u, a, i, i, ow, all of that stuff is really fun. I do remember doing it. And this is probably the most important part. We have to um, famil fam we have to familiarise ourselves with the key TS teacher stand standards. I can't. I literally can't speak today. Listen, it's the Easter holidays. I've had enough of speaking. I'm trying to be silent all day. Um, obviously, teaching standards is so so important. I believe there are eight teaching evidence standards you have to follow to be a successful qualified teacher and like we'll just be referring back to it so much i know in the pgc you get those massive bulky folders and you're expected to evidence each of those teaching standards that you do over the course of the pgc so very important let's see if the link works it probably won't oh this is the only one that does work probably because it's the most important i'm not going to go into it but um maybe I, I might link it down if you want me to link it just say in the comments below don't forget to subscribe okay so next we have to look at children's literature so we have to select 10 books relevant to our teaching phase three to seven key stage one or five to eleven key stage two that's my one so um 10 children's books and um, we have to look at the extent to which they entice the reader into reading. Do they have strong language patterns or narrative structure? Do they link with children's cultural or language experience? Do they have stimulating um, illustrations or pictorial text? Do they encourage the development of print concepts, one-to-one -one matching, visual and phonic awareness? And do they offer opportunities for follow-on activities? You know, sometimes you get children's book and um, it might say in the bottom in sp um, small print, oh, like, talk to a parent or a partner about um, how you could make this spaceship yourself, just things like that. And um, you have to make notes on each book and we can set this out into a table. I think this is to prepare us for some type of literature review. Um obviously if you've gone to uni well you would need to have gone to uni to be doing a pgc um in most of our essays or dissertations we have to t we have to write some type of literature review and i guess that's pointing towards that i'm guessing this will help us out a lot um i did an amazing literature review for my master's degree so if i have trouble doing this then something's wrong okay these people are screaming outside. See, a little bit of sun, people get excited, but what can you do? We've been in lockdown for so long. Okay, next, we have to sharpen up on our subject knowledge. So it says here that we need to complete assessment and recommended modules of Elevate My Maths. I hate maths so much. We have to revise subject knowledge of literacy, maths and science through self-study. And um, it's given us a list of like these GCSE revision books that we can use to help us with the QTS test. 
why do they keep lying they keep saying that they scrapped the um qts test and they haven't because it's saying here that we need to revise to do a qts test and i did some type of test when i was being interviewed for this um course provider so why are they lying the government said it was scrapped I find that I really find that annoying to be honest it's like if you have your GCSE in maths English and science you shouldn't need to go through a whole leap of tests again because it's a thing where it's like if you just show me in the math in math for example if you show me like the bus stop method with division or the column method with multiplication or addition if you just show me the method I will know how to do it we shouldn't have to take tests and stuff that's really really annoying <sighs> Kind of putting me off a bit you know maybe i'm just being lazy and um then we have to read up on behavior management so it's given us a book here we have to read called classroom behavior a practical guide to effective teaching behavior management and colleague support um i feel with behavior that's another thing that a lot of teacher trainees worry about um especially to, for those who haven't maybe stepped into a classroom before it can be quite um quite intimidating like some may think oh they're just kids but trust me kids can be very very rude and you do have to hold your tongue because of course you're working with children you can't just be like shut up <laughs> do you know what i mean you really have to process what you're going to say before you say it and you have to come in as a leader so that they respect you and listen to you um so behavior management is a big one then we have to read up on master's level writing um so at pgc yeah you have to be writing at master's level because it's level seven um i shouldn't really have a problem with that because i did do my master's two years ago now but i mean two years is a lot of time away from education so i've probably forgotten it's given us two books we have to read and we have to read critical reading and writing for postgraduates third edition and we have to read doing your pgc at master's level all these books they're saying we need to read i am not going to buy them yes i will read them of course but i'm not going to buy them I've seen so many videos saying don't buy any books. Always try and find an ebook on um, Google. Journal, you know, journal articles on Google. I might do a little video showing you how to do that. But I mean, we should have known. We we probably learned how to do it like at university or something. But um, yeah, always find the ebook online first on Google Books. That's what it's called. And there's so many um, other websites. For some reason in my head i'm picturing a website called taylor taylor and something i know they have ebooks there so don't buy any books maybe one or two but just don't go out of your way to spend money plus there's no funding so we ain't getting paid for this yeah we get the student loan some of us might be lucky enough to have scholarships and stuff but most of us are not getting paid so do not buy any books okay obviously we have to read up on safeguarding from the top of my head i can tell you now to read up on keeping children safe um keeping children safe in education part one um i even had to do that as a um, ta like when i first started we had to do like um a mini course not nothing big just like it would give you all the information then at the end you'd answer 10 questions and then you'd get a certificate for it um so we need to read up on preventing anti-radicalization and um also we need to get a copy of the school we're working in we need to get a copy of their child protection and safeguarding policy um and then we need to read and make notes and annotate and um it's going to be talking a lot about again this is off the top of my head it's going to be talking a lot about children who are who may be neglected so if a, ch a child comes in and their breath smells or like their clothes are dirty that can point to neglect because maybe they haven't brushed their teeth maybe they, they haven't had breakfast and their clothes aren't washed and things like that also um genital mutilation with females i think it's called well, fgm female genital mutilation um there's a lot of 
um, oh, and anti-radicalisation. There's a lot of horrible things in there, but we need to know it because we're working in education. We need to obviously be keeping children safe. Um, then we need to read up on professional responsibilities. So we need to read and make notes on teachers' legal rights and responsibilities and parental responsibilities too and using reasonable force. I'd, I'd give you that look because in my school there's just been so many incidents when a child has um, lashed out and stuff and we have to use reasonable force. And it's difficult when you're getting punched up and, and stuff but obviously you can't hurt a child can you otherwise that's like you get fired instantly. So um, that's all the pre-course tasks that I have been given. This could be a part one actually and I'll make a part two when I'm actually reading up on this stuff. Like maybe I'll do, um, what's it called, a vlog? Yeah, maybe I'll do a vlog like a week, like a day in the life of, you know when we get there. Anyway, please subscribe to this channel loads more pgce content coming soon um there'll probably be one more pgc video which is me preparing and then the actual start in september if i receive any more information oh yeah of course because i've also been sent an email that we have to come into some kind of workshop um just to get to know everyone and stuff so i may may do a little vlog on that if i can um, but yeah, please, please subscribe. Let's join this community together. September 2021, we've got this. By September 2022, we're going to be NQTs. We can do it. See you soon. Have a lovely day. And if you're working in education, have a lovely Easter holiday. Bye.